The world's ever-changing geopolitical landscape has inevitable consequences upon sport and the world of football. In our look at the best footballer from every country in each continent, we have seen national teams that have only affiliated with their confederations in the last few years, such as Kosovo and Gibraltar. Today, we're taking a look at national teams that previously held full FIFA membership, but for one reason or another, now no longer exist. On this occasion, we are looking at the best ever player to play for the national team, rather than the best current one, for what I would hope are rather obvious reasons. Here are our views on the best footballer from every national team that no longer exists. Czechoslovakia, Josef Masipust. The greatest Czech footballer of all time, and yes, we are including Pavel Nedved in that, Josef Masipus recently made our feature length look of the 100 greatest footballers of all time, so he was a shoe in here. Oh, and you should really check that video out if you haven't already, I'll even stick a link to it in the video description, since I'm nice like that. A Ballon d'Or winner in 1962, back when the award meant something, and wasn't just a popularity contest dictated by sponsors and agents, Masipust was a tireless midfield all-rounder with quick feet, an eye for a pass, and a fantastic understanding of the game. He spent the vast majority of his career with Dukla Prague, meaning most people only saw him play in international football. Thankfully, Masipus turned on the style for Czechoslovakia, making the team of the tournament at both the European Championships in 1960 and the World Cup in 1962. At the latter of those two, the World Cup Finals in Chile, Masipus helped Czechoslovakia to the final, a game in which he scored but was powerless to prevent a 3-1 win for Brazil. The Czechoslovakia national team ceased to exist in 1993, when the nation was split up into the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Saarland Gerhard Siegel Following German defeat in World War II, Saarland was partitioned from Germany to form a protectorate administered by the French. Between 1950 and 1956, Saarland was an independent member of the Council of Europe, as well as being a full FIFA member. The only notable competitive football the nation played was the 1954 World Cup qualifiers, where they finished ahead of Norway but second to West Germany, who they would later merge with following a referendum. From Herbert Martin to Kirk Clemens, there were a number of good Saarland internationals, the vast majority of whom played their club football for Saarbrücken. Our pick for Saarland though is prolific Munich-born striker Gerhard Seidel. Seidel played for the likes of Bayern Munich, Saarbrücken and Basel, scoring four goals from 16 caps for Saarland and later three goals from six caps for West Germany. Unfortunately, we don't have any pictures of Seidel other than this Saarland team photo. West Germany Franz Beckenbauer. Mentioned there is the national team that Saarland merged with and the national team who finished above them in qualification for the 1954 World Cup, West Germany went on to win that tournament in extraordinary fashion on home soil. By far the most successful national team in this video, the West German national team, officially the Federal Republic of Germany national team, spanned from the end of World War II up until the reunification of Germany in 1990. During that time, the West German national team played in 10 World Cups, winning the tournament three times, reaching six finals and a further two semi-finals. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that there were a very many fantastic West German internationals then, and we'd have to give special mentions to the likes of Fritz Walter, Gunter Netzer, Lothar Matthäus and Gerd Müller. Ultimately though, top spot has to go to Franz Beckenbauer, a man who recently came in eighth in our list of the 100 greatest footballers of all time. Beckenbauer was both a warrior and an intellectual on the pitch. Having started out as a central midfielder, he ended up operating primarily as a sweeper, where he was formidable defensively and a constant source of creativity as a deep-lying playmaker. A three-time Ballon d'Or winner and the greatest defender of all time, he has to take this one. East Germany, Matthias Sammer. Following West Germany, it could only be East Germany. Less successful than their near neighbours, Former fellow countrymen and eventual fellow countrymen once more, the East German national team spanned from 1952 to 1990. In that time, they only managed to qualify for one major tournament, the 1974 World Cup. They beat West Germany and qualified for the second round at the finals, but were eventually knocked out following defeats to Brazil and the Netherlands. East Germany had some very fine footballers, including their top scorer Joachim Streich and Dynamo Dresden legend Hans-Jürgen Dorner, but our pick as the national team's best player has to be Matthias Sammer. A world-class sweeper who could also play in defensive midfield or as a centre-back, Sammer was a fierce competitor but also a very good technician, and he won the Ballon d'Or in 1996. 
Best remembered for his time with Borussia Dortmund, where he won two Bundesliga titles and a Champions League, Sammer won 23 caps for the East German national team and 51 caps for the unified German national team, with whom he also won Euro 96. Ireland Johnny Carey The fourth oldest international team in football history, the Ireland national team was founded in 1882 and played right through until 1950. Although the Ireland national team was run out of Belfast, players were selected from the entire island of Ireland, and games were played in both Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. In the end, in preparation for the 1954 World Cup, a separate Northern Ireland national team was founded. Many great players represented the Ireland team, such as Bernie great Jimmy McElroy and the remarkably prolific Joe Bambrick. In the end though, we've gone for Manchester United's former First Division and FA Cup winning jack of all trades, Johnny Carey. Primarily a right back, Carey was an incredibly talented and versatile player, and he won 29 caps for Ireland. Malaya Abdul Ghani Minna If you thought this list was going to be all Franz Beckenbauer's and Matthias Sammers, then I've got bad news for you, although many of you say that you prefer to hear about more obscure players and regions. Well, if that's the case, then you're in luck, since we're certainly going to be getting more obscure as this list goes on. Kicking us off in the plays you've almost certainly never heard of category is Malaya's finest Abdul Ghani Minna. The Malaya national team spanned from 1953 to 1963 when it became the Malaysia national team, and their best player was actually a pretty obvious show. Abdul Ghani Minna is considered by many to be the greatest Malaysian footballer of all time. Minna trained with the likes of Arsenal, Tottenham, and Eintracht Frankfurt during his career, and the gifted frontman scored 31 goals from 39 caps for the Malaya national team. Tanganyika. No idea. Okay, subscribers to this channel will know that this doesn't happen very often. In fact, I think in our upcoming video on the best footballer from every country on earth, there'll only be one country who we haven't named a player for, two at the most. So it is no exaggeration when I say I have literally no idea who Tanganyika's best player was. The Tanganyika national team unsurprisingly represented the nation of Tanganyika up until the country's union with Zanzibar in 1964 to form the Tanzania national team. Mandatory Palestine Johannan Sukunik Brazil, Germany, Argentina, Mandatory Palestine When discussing the famous footballing dynasties, you just can't forget the great national team of Mandatory Palestine. Okay, you can, and I'd never heard of them before making this video, but they did exist. Representing the British Mandate for Palestine from 1934 up until the State of Israel was declared in 1948, you will sometimes see the Mandatory Palestine National Team described as an Ersatz Israel National Team. Either way, our choice as the short-lived National Team's best player is Yohanin Sukunik, a talented half-back and four-time title winner with Hapoel Tel Aviv who won four caps for Mandatory Palestine. South Vietnam Lee Van Ho from French occupation to US intervention, most of you will know that Vietnam has had a pretty complex and often bloody past. Between 1949 and 1975, there were separate South and North Vietnamese national teams, although only the South Vietnamese, officially named the Vietnam National Team, were FIFA members. We must admit to not knowing much about the South Vietnamese national team, unsurprisingly, but their finest achievements were drawn with Hong Kong at the 1956 Asian Cup and reaching the quarterfinals of the 1958 Asian Games. It made sense then to go for a player who featured in both of those squads, so we've gone for midfielder Lee Van Ho. North Yemen. No idea. Okay, I know I said this doesn't happen a lot, but it's going to happen twice today. The North Yemen national team, officially Yemen AR, competed from 1965 right up until 1990, but we still have absolutely no idea about their individual personnel. If you do, please do let us know in the comments. South Yemen Abubakar Al Mas We may have struggled with the minnows of North Yemen, but when it comes to the titans of South Yemen, we have no such problems. Abubakar Al Mas is considered by some to be the greatest Yemeni footballer of all time, and certainly the finest of his era. He represented South Yemen between 1975 and 1989, and even represented Yemen following the nation's reunification in 1990. The United Arab Republic Badawi Abdel Fattah The United Arab Republic is a slightly difficult one to get your head around and is not to be confused with the United Arab Emirates in any way. 
the United Arab Republic was basically a combination of the best players from Egypt and Syria between 1958 and 1961. And most history books will now just put that team's records down as a continuation of the Egyptian national team. But that isn't the case. Our choice as the UAR's best player is Badawi Abdel Fattah, a talented attacking midfielder who went on to be Egypt's top scorer at the 1962 African Cup of Nations. The Soviet Union, Lev Yashin. Back to a more familiar face, Lev Yashin is another man who recently featured in our video on the 100 greatest footballers of all time. The Soviet Union national team was founded in 1924 and naturally dissolved following the fall of the USSR in 1991. The Soviet national team was actually rather a competitive one, certainly far better than the current Russian national team, reaching the semi-finals of the 1966 World Cup and winning Euro 1960. One man who was part of both of those successes was Lev Yashin, widely considered to be the greatest goalkeeper in the sports history. Both a brilliant goalkeeper and a pioneer of the position in which he played, Yashin remains the only number one to have won the Ballon d'Or. Other players we could mention include the great Edward Streltsov and another Ballon d'Or winner in the form of Ole Blokken, but you can't overlook Yashin as the automatic choice. CIS Andrei Kanchelskis The successor to the Soviet national team was the brief CIS national team, CIS standing for the Commonwealth of Independent States. Only ever a transitional team, CIS played their first game in January 1992 and their last game in June 1992 but that period did include Euro 92, where they finished bottom of their group. There were a few decent players who picked up a couple of caps for the transitional outfit, but our pick as the best of the lot is Andre Kanchelskis. A really quick and dangerous wide man, best associated with his four-year spell at Old Trafford, Kanchelskis was Manchester United's Player of the Year in the 1994-95 season. Yugoslavia, Dragan Jajic. There is a real blend of all-time greats and absolute nobodies in this list, and a man who falls firmly into the former category, and another of our 100 goats, is Yugoslavia's greatest ever player, Dragan Jajic. Simply put, one of the best left-wingers in the history of the game, possessing absolute mastery over the ball, fantastic crossing ability, and a devilish turn of pace. Jajic twice made the European Championships team of the tournament, and he was the tournament's top scorer in 1968, when Yugoslavia reached the final. Serbia and Montenegro, Nemanja Vidic. The Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, which played from 1994 to 2003, and Serbia and Montenegro, who played from 2003 to 2006, are considered to have been just one national team. During their time as Serbia and Montenegro, the national team went out in the group stages of the 2006 World Cup and failed to qualify for Euro 2004. Nevertheless, they still have a very good candidate to put forward as their best player. Nemanja Vidic is widely considered to be one of the outstanding defenders of the Premier League era. An inspired signing by Sir Alex Ferguson, Vidic was strong, alert and uncompromising and he formed a fantastic centre-back partnership with Rio Ferdinand, despite becoming increasingly injury prone in his last couple of years with the club. Netherlands Antilles Robin Nelis Having played their first match in 1948 and their final game in 2010 when the Netherlands Antilles was dissolved, the Netherlands Antilles national team never qualified for a World Cup, although they twice finished in third place in the CONCACAF Championships. Our choice as the nation's best player is Robin Nelis, who won just two caps for the country in 2008. A big handful of a centre forward with an eye for goal, Nelis played for the likes of Feyenoord, AZ Alkmaar and Red Bull Salzburg. So that's it for today's Not Actually A 7. As always, let us know any new video ideas you'd like to see from us in the comments. Thanks for watching, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for HITC7s for more from us.